Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to talk about preparing for psychology internship interviews and actually going on those interviews and things to be aware of, thing, you know, things to consider. So first of all, with this um, document here, I've already shown you this, but I think it's really important, um, super important. Like I really think you all should do this. Um, you're going to want to know when interviews are likely to be so that when you get emails, you'll be able to respond very quickly um, to sites and dates. Them. Because what will typically happen for most sites, some will call, but the vast majority are going to email you. And they will give you the dates that are available for their internship um, interviews. And um, you are to send back your top three choices or something like that. These go extremely quickly. Like as soon as you see one of these emails, you need to drop everything and respond right away uh, with your availability to make sure you get the best date. Now with that, how do you know which is the best date? Well, that's where the bad or the homework comes in, which again, I know this is a little harder to tell because I've already deleted off you know, a bunch of dates, but what I did was I went through and did this for all my sites where yeah, if they give a clue um, in their APIC profile about when their interview dates are or on their website, great. I put it in there and I put that over here so I knew like this was a date that both Denver and Detroit had in common. So Denver was higher on my list than Detroit at the time. So I didn't want to give that date to Detroit if I was trying to save it for Denver, that sort of thing. So you get all these dates. Now, what do you do if they don't have it on um, on either their website or you know anything like that? Well, let me actually show you that. So, um, Student Doctor Network. So, some of you have used this before; others haven't. Um, let me actually log in here. Okay. Yes, I've clearly read all those. Okay. So Student Doctor Network. Um, this is a topic where a lot of the people that post here are going to be applying for just, you know, grad school. But you do have it where people are applying for internship. And oh my gosh, they already have the internship application thread up. It's always amazing when this starts. So this is super early for this to start. Um, so someone will always start this. Believe it or not, I was the one um, back in the day, not for internship, but actually I started the thread for um, grad school, and I posted you know, when people heard from different grad schools. But there's always an internship application thread. So let's see if we can find the one from last year, because that's what you're going to want to do. So, um, let's see if I put this in quotes if I can get it. Sweet. Okay. So, hopefully, it will be in here. Here's what I need. Okay. Beautiful. So, people will post on this thread as they hear from different internships. So what they'll do is the the poor person running this, and again, I did this way back in the day, um, will post the site and also the different dates that they're offering. Now, what you can do is you can go back to last year's and get a good sense of when they're likely to do it. You know, are they doing like the first five Fridays, you know, of the new year? Are they doing... You know, like here, it looks like they just knocked it out right at the start of the new year. You'll have a good sense of when they're going to actually offer these dates. So, um, and also you'll have a good sense of when you might hear. This is also very nice to know. So, no matter what, whether you like to have um, the information or not about this current year, your year that you're applying Go back to last year's and fill in the dates to have as good of a sense as you can 
on when different sites are going to be posting and what dates they're likely to have. Once you have that, then you have to decide for you whether or not you're a student doctor network person. So for me, I want to know. Even if it's bad news, I want to know the bad news. I want to be informed. So I was always on this thread because, you know, even if it was at a site that I really wanted, sent out invitations and I didn't get one, I, I wanted to know that. Um, for others, that made them super anxious and they didn't want to know that. Um, totally up to you. You don't need to be the one that watches this. I still watch it because I'm a nerd for you guys and I, I want you to do well. Um, but you know, you, you just have to decide for yourself what makes sense. Um, but I wanted you to know a that it's here if you want it, and also know how to use it to find the dates from last year and to kind of guesstimate what dates you know they'll have the next year. So you create your spreadsheet, you do an initial rank, um. And that way, you, you can say, okay, I'm getting a call about, you know, I got a call from this site, and they're offering these dates. You know, if there's a date where it doesn't conflict with anything, great, take it. If there's one where it conflicts, but it conflicts with something that's lower on your list or a site that's likely to have many dates, then maybe it, you take one of those dates. You know, you play it by ear with that. Um, the other thing is I only got to do one December interview, but I can tell you from experience, December interviews are wonderful. The more you can do, the better. Very, very important. Um, so if it's possible to do a December interview, absolutely take it. Um, January gets extremely busy. Um, and that's where I always like to show my January schedule. Again, I have this in the folder for you. Um, you can see I, I was traveling like all of January. So the more you can get in December, the better, just because you're going to have things overlap in January. There's just no way around it. So Try to get December dates, if at all possible. Um, oops, sorry about that. I hit my microphone. So shopping for flights. Um, open open job flies, flights is what they're called. That's your friend. Um, because you're not really going to necessarily be doing a bunch of um, round trips. You'll probably be doing a bunch of one ways. So um, U.S. Airways, back when they existed, was great with this. Different, you know, I'd probably start at Kayak and see what you could do. Um, Multi-city. And here you can just put in, you know, let's say you had to go to Denver, you know, Denver, you had to go to Pittsburgh, you know. I just just put something in here just for fun to kind of see what happens. So Pittsburgh, and let's say we have to go to JFK. Let's say let's say you're gonna be going up the fourth. And, um, Let's add one more, why not? JFK. Let's say you're gonna do it down. Let's say you're gonna do Okay, so it would not be surprising at all if your travel looks something like this. That's a lot of flights. So then you can use this to search, and you may not find it all on one. Um, one airline, of course. But this will give you a sense of, like, okay, like, here are all these flights, and that's not bad. <laughs> like, if you can get all your flights for around 500 bucks, that's not bad. Now, granted, you know, it'll be more last second. But 
I would do something like this to get a sense of how you might be able to put something like this together. Um, let's see, let's see down there. If you go to the website, you'll likely be able to do something like this too. Um, most of them let you do it. Um, multi city, and then same thing. So, so keep that in mind. Um, couple other travel things. Often, uh, for us, I fly out of Memphis a fair amount. Sometimes certain places, Meridian, believe it or not, Meridian has an airport that's pretty decent. Um, you can fly out of Tupelo nonstop to um, Nashville, if that's helpful. Um, but And Birmingham, but Birmingham's often not cheaper, but sometimes it is for something on the East Coast. So, you may have to be creative on which airports you're flying into and out of. Um, but that's how I search uh, for these flights. Um, I know most of you are going to use Airbnb. I'm old. Maybe I'm, well, I am old. I am old school too. It makes me nervous. Um, you're living in someone else's house. You don't know them. You know, they could be super noisy. It could be in a horrible neighborhood. I like hotels, still, um, And I'm a big fan of Priceline. Um, so let me give you my very brief Priceline lesson. So let's just do Starkville for the heck of it. You know the hotels around here. Let's pretend it's in January. So, so here are the hotels in Starkville. So let, again, I'm pretending like I'm going to be looking for a place in Starkville. So this gives you a lot of information to be able to tell what hotels you're looking at, even when you're doing the blind search. So, like, let's look at Express Deals, right? So, here we go. Start fill. There's a two-star hotel with an eight-plus rating with 70 guest reviews. So, with that, I can look for a two-star, eight rating, 70 guest reviews. I bet you anything it's this hotel. In fact... Look, normally 81, but you can pay 61. It's this hotel. Um, pretty much has to be. So, but you can save, you know, a good amount by doing, you know, the express deal. Likewise, you know, Columbus, two and a half star, seven plus hundred reviews. Let's see if we can figure it out. So two and a half star in Columbus with the seven. Okay, Columbus, 100 reviews, seven, two and a half star, almost really this hotel. So 79 if you buy it not blind, if you buy blind, 58. So that helps. Um, if you want to save a little bit more, you can do the name your own price. And so again, let's do start fill. So here, three star, eight plus on the rating. Well, let's look at Starkville. Three star, eight plus in the rating. You're bidding on this. So you, you can use the information that they provide to pretty much figure out what hotel you're bidding on. Um, the other thing with bidding, if you decide to bid. So there's a three star hotel. Let's say you want that three star. You want that Hilton Garden Inn, right? You can click through and see what places have a three star and which ones don't. And, and around here, it's going to be most that don't. So once you have that, write down the ones that do not have a three-star. Because what you can do is you bid for that three-star. If you don't get it, you can immediately bid again by adding on another area. So you add on another area that doesn't have a three-star, and you're still bidding for sure on that same property. So I don't have to worry if I say I want a three-star hotel. I don't have to worry about ending up in West Point instead of Starkville because there's not a three star there. So those are just some initial tips. I'm more than happy to talk with you about um, 
how to save some money with your travel. Um, I'm a nerd with this stuff. But, and you can go even further. There are actually ways to do VPNs to make it look like you're somewhere else and save even more money on your travel. If you're if you want, I'm happy to go through all that with you. Um, I know most of you are just gonna do Airbnb, but um before you do, at least look at the quotes for a hotel with ratings and you know, again Airbnb is ratings, I know. Just just consider it. Just consider it. It makes me happy, it makes me feel good. Um save up your money. Um this whole process is likely to cost you several thousand dollars. Um, probably, probably three to four for most. Two if you're really uh, thrifty. Um, I have in the PowerPoint that in there. I have how much I paid. I was really thrifty on it. Um, I think I only paid a couple grand, but it's going to cost some money. So save up, be ready for it. Consider a travel credit card. Um, there are certain credit cards where, um, you know, once you have so much to spend, you can get free flights or, um, you, you know, with the Delta credit card, you can get it where bad fees are waived. Um, personally, I have, I don't have any that are directly branded like that, but um, I have a Chase Sapphire Reserve. That's a nice card because while it has a 450 annual fee, which is a lot of money, I get it. Um, 300 um, and travel is automatically reimbursed towards that. And there are other ways to make up the rest of the difference. So that's a card that may not make sense for you most years in grad school, but might make sense this year in grad school. So look at the credit cards. Think of if that makes sense for you or not. Um, I'm happy to talk with you about those as well. I keep up with those as well because I'm a nerd. Um, when you get to the interview, um, if possible, get there early um, and try to get your schedule early if you can. And you'll want to know the site. For sure, you'll want to know the rotation, but also know your supervisors. Um, know, you know, if you're sitting down with Dr. Smith, you should know what rotation Dr. Smith supervises. Um, you know, so I always try to find something I have in common with a person. If I trained at a similar place or I know someone, if I know Dr. Smith's advisor, I might mention that, you know, just showing that I've done my homework, you know, show that you naturally have done your homework as much as you can from the website, as much as would be expected. Um, brush up on your PAI and your MMPI. So this is not as common. It never happened to me, but there are certain sites um, that use these a lot. It will give you a profile and will ask you on the spot to interpret it. So, yeah, if you don't know your stuff, you're in trouble with that. So if you're applying for sites that are pretty heavy on um, personality assessments, and you'll probably know them because they're very likely to ask, you know, for a, um, a sample report with a personality assessment, make sure that you've brushed up on that information. Be ready for pretty much anything. So certain sites do very wonky things. Some will put you in a room that has a you know a mirror they can look through a one way mirror, and um, and they'll see how you interact with fellow interns. Um, I've heard of one that had Confederates um, where they you know. Sites will do wonky things. Just be ready for everything. Go with the flow. Very important. Show that you can adapt and go with the flow. But with this, remember that you're interviewing them too. So pay close attention to whether or not the interns are happy. Um, what's their work-life balance like? How many hours are they actually putting in every day? Um, you don't want it to come across as lazy, but you also it's okay to have a work-life balance. And it's okay to make sure that they feel like they're getting a good training experience. And and you'll know the difference. You can really tell a difference in happiness and sites. And you'll know the places where they're really being worked like crazy and the places where they're not. Um, just keep that in mind. Um, that's not inconsequential. Um, VA sites want to train VA clinicians. 
So with that, when they asked you what you want to be when you grow up, the answer is a VA clinician. If you say something else, it may or may not hurt you, but it's probably not worth the chance. They want to train VA clinicians. Um, certain sites, namely med centers, often may, well, I should say often. I did, I trained at a med center, and there's a great training experience. Some want you for cheap labor. You know, some want you as someone they don't have to pay a lot. You see a bunch of clients and and you pay for yourself. So how do you know the difference? Well, one is you asked about um, the training that they're getting. You asked about the hours they're pulling. Um, do they have quotas they have to hit? That's a good thing to know. Um, but also, look at the faculty. Where did the faculty train? If the faculty train mostly at that site, that's a good sign for me. Um, again, because you have a, a vested interest in training your own people well. If they trained mostly elsewhere, yeah, it may not mean anything, but it may mean something. Just keep it in mind. If you have that and it looks like the interns are being worked like a dog, I would not rank that site highly, if at all. And we'll talk about that later in the next video on ranking. Um, have lots of questions prepared. You do not want to run out of questions. And in some interviews, we'll just, you know, much like I usually do with my DCT interviews for grad school, I just ask what questions people have often. So make sure you have good questions for the site. Um, don't be afraid to ask more than one person the same question. A, they're probably not going to compare notes to say, hey, he asked me about this too. And also, inter-rater reliability is valuable. If you did very different answers from two people, that's going to tell you something. And actually, may mean you need to ask a third person too. Lastly, thank you notes. So after the interview, it's pretty customary to, um, by the way, sorry if you hear these emails come in. I forgot to post my email program. Hopefully, it's not recording that. Um, so after the interview, um, it's pretty customary for people to write a thank you note to the people that they interviewed with. So not just the DC team, but the people that you interviewed with. So take some notes out the day so you remember what you talked to them about. So you can say, hey, there's great learning about this. I enjoyed learning more about your site. Um, enthusiastic about the site. Um, I think I could really benefit from training here. Don't talk about your rank. That is breaking APIC rules. And, you know, some places will try to get that information out of you. You know, just don't go there. Don't talk about how you'll rank. You can talk about your enthusiasm for a site. I'm very enthusiastic. It, you know, I, it's a site that I think would be a great training experience for me. I can see how this... Um, so it will help me get, to, you know, meet my career goals. Um, talk about, there are ways to show your interest without saying, I'm going to rank you highly or I'm going to rank you first or, you know. Oh, man, I'm sorry about these emails if you're hearing this. Um, but some sites will tell you you don't need to write thank you notes. I say just do them. You know, I don't think it's going to hurt you to, to do them. Um, it's nice when a site says you don't need to do them, but just do them just in case. You don't want to be the one person that actually listens and doesn't do them. So do the thank you notes. I think they'll, you'll thank yourself later. Um, and yeah, I hope that helps. And um, again, if you have questions on travel or on setting this stuff up or interviews, let me know. Um, before you go, definitely do a mock interview, I should mention, with a faculty member or two. Sam Weiner is usually very good at doing these, um, but do some mocks um, just to have that experience under your belt too. Uh, you'll thank yourself later.